microphone is on. There we go. I want to welcome you here. If you guys want to stand up, we're going to go ahead and start with some worship. This first song is called Great Things. We're just going to sing about our hero in heaven this morning. So if you guys want to go ahead and clap your hands, we're going to sing. Thank you that you're our Father and that there is a place for us in your house. 
Every single person in this room is a child of God and we have a purpose and we declare that this morning, Jesus. We love you, Lord. That the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who oh, the sun sets free. Oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of. His grace runs deep While I was a slave to sin Jesus died for me Amen Yes, He died for me Who the Son set free Oh, is free indeed I'm a child of God Yes, I
kisses and I call you answer and you came to my rescue and I I wanna be us as we've sung these songs and now God we want to apply our faith in our situation in this specific time this specific place Lord we know that there are brothers and sisters in Christ raising up prayers at this very moment all across our nation Lord we join with them we intercede for our nation we intercede Lord for this election that's upcoming and again, Lord, we don't go through the motions. We're asking, God, that your kingdom would come and your will would be done here in the United States as it is in heaven. God, we ask for uh, uh, peace in our streets. We pray against any violence this week, oh God. However, however the election takes place, God, would you please remind us again, oh God, that we are kingdom people, that we belong to your kingdom first and foremost. Lord, we thank you for the freedoms that we enjoy here in the United States. At the same time, we recognize, God, that we, we have a first allegiance to the kingdom of God. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us to, to live that out this week. I pray, Lord, that, that our response as believers to this election, again, however it turns out, Lord, that our response would, would set us apart. Lord, that people would, would recognize, oh, you're a believer. You live for something greater. Lord, we pray against the virus that seems to be, again, racking our country and the entire planet. God, we ask that you would stop the effects of the virus. We pray, Lord, for those who are working on uh, the, the medicine, Lord, that uh, uh, will help along these lines. We ask, God, that you bless them, give them wisdom, supernatural enabling. We pray, Lord, for all those involved in government who are trying to make very difficult decisions. We ask God that you give them wisdom. And Lord, we pray, we pray your blessing upon our nation. God, we certainly don't deserve it. But God, your grace is so great. And so we can stand in faith on behalf of our nation. God, we intercede and we pray Lord, your blessing once again. God, would you pour out your spirit one more time here in the United States. We pray, Lord, we know that the solution is not just physical health. We know that the solution for the United States and for every individual in the United States is, is, is not found in government. So, Lord, we pray for a revival. We pray that revival would sweep our nation. Lord, let it begin with us. Let it begin with us. Holy Spirit, we want to respond to your voice this morning. We want to hear from you, O oh God. We want, we want to set our minds and our hearts to obey you. Lord, we thank you for your presence among us. We thank you, God, that you have set us apart for your purposes. We pray, Lord, today that, that in fact, God, you would be glorified in and through our lives. We ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen, amen. Normally we'd say, hey, greet somebody, shake their hands, hug their necks. We're not going to do that. Uh, but would you give an air high five, maybe a wave across the room to somebody before you're seated? God bless you. Well, as you find a seat, we want to welcome you uh, to Flag Church. Um, I am just thankful um, that we are able to be together today. Um, I told the first service that being together in person, whether it be for me on Tuesdays or Wednesdays or Sunday mornings, it gives me life to be a part 
of this, to be with people that are pursuing Jesus together, to be in a physical building with other like-minded people that are pursuing the Lord, it gives me life. In whatever situation, whatever uh, you know, difficulties I may find myself in, when I can be surrounded by other people that are pursuing Jesus, it just gives me life. So we're so glad that, that we're able to be together, that we're privileged to be together, um, that uh, we have the freedoms to be together and worship the Lord. Uh, so we're just glad that you guys are here. If you're joining us for the first time, if you're joining us online, uh, we encourage you guys to go to our flag app, and there you can find a connect card. And uh, you, if you would fill that connect card out, especially if you're a visitor, that will allow us to connect with you, to serve you better, uh, to make sure that you're connected with our pastors, um, to to be affiliated with uh, Pastor Tom and know who he is, have a connection with him. And uh, we, so we encourage you to do that, especially if this is your first time that you would go to our flag app. And then we also have an opportunity for everyone uh, on the flag app. If you have a, a request, a prayer request, if you have something that is going on in your life and you want people to pray for you, we want to be people that are praying for you. We have a prayer team that does that. And it was awesome is that you can do that not only on Sunday mornings, but that you can do that throughout the week. So anytime that you have something that is going on in your life and you want people to pray for you, if you go to the Flag app, hit that prayer request button, you can fill that out and we receive those and we can begin praying for you throughout the week. Um, and that's something that we've been seeing here uh, recently that people are utilizing that throughout the week. And that's what we want it to be there for um, is so that you feel like somebody is behind you and in your corner uh, praying for you. We're excited uh, for next Saturday, November 7th. Um, our youth group, Empowered Youth, is doing a one-day event um, to pursue the Lord together. Um, we're bringing in James River Leadership College and uh, also a pastor from James River, which is in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, they're coming to um, lead our students, lead our youth group um, in a day event pursuing the Lord uh, starting at 9 a.m. going to 5.30 p.m. We're going to have some services, breakout sessions, Games is going to be an awesome opportunity for uh, students between 6th through 12th grade to come and connect. So if you have a student that you have not signed up, get them signed up. If you have family members that don't even attend here, if you know friends that have kids that need to be involved and plugged into a church, this is a great opportunity to get them plugged in. So we encourage you uh, to do that. You can find that on our flag app, on the Church Center app. And uh, that's a very easy way. You'll find all the information, a way to, an easy way to register. So that's on the Church Center app. And uh, so we encourage you to do that. Also, we're excited that this Thursday, um, Flag will be hosting Chamber Coffee. And uh, so we're going to have the opportunity uh, with other business leaders uh, around our city to come together to represent Jesus uh, as a church. And so we're excited that uh, we're going to have other business business leaders here. So if you're a business leader or if you know other business leaders, we encourage you to invite them or invite yourself because you are invited to come out to this, be a part of this as we um, come together as a city and uh, as, as flag represents Jesus uh, very well in this community. So we're excited for that. And, uh, you know, this is something that we say every single week as we move to our, our giving uh, portion. Um, and I can understand how sometimes when you hear something week to week that it can seem uh, not genuine, but we want you to understand that we really believe and are so thankful that flag is filled up with people that are faithful to the Lord and they're giving, um, that they understand the importance of honoring the Lord and the partnership that we get to have with the Lord when we give in spreading his gospel. Uh, so we encourage you guys to do that, um, whether that be in person uh, with the baskets that are outside of the lobby here, um, or if that be online on our flag app. Uh, on our website, whatever is easiest for you to honor the Lord, we encourage you to do that because we get to partner in spreading the gospel here um, in, in Pittsburgh and SEK area, surrounding areas. Um, so we just thank you guys for being people that are passionate about giving to the Lord and reaching people uh, for the gospel. So we love you guys, and uh, we're going to encourage you at this time to direct your attention to the screens for a short video. Good morning, Flag Church. I'm Mike, one of the board members here. And I'm taking this opportunity to talk to you about Pastor Appreciation Night. We're so blessed to have the pastors that we do at Flag. Pastor Tom and Lori, Pastor Anthony and Misty, Pastor Eli and Alyssa. Many times church leaders 
their work is unseen and underappreciated. We have opportunities to show our appreciation to them. First is we have cards in the foyer that we can write personal messages to our leaders. Second, on November 1st, we're going to take up a special offering. Be praying for God to God how you want to uh, be used by Him. Third is be praying for our pastors continually, for their health and well-being, for their relationships, for the work God sent them to do. I just want to reiterate how much God has blessed Flag with the pastors, the leaders and staff that we have. Thank you. Good morning. Mike and I are here representing the board and wanted to draw attention to pastor appreciation. And um, we wanted to say a few words and to show our appreciation and recognition to them. So as they're coming up and their spouses and plus half, Declan, half, counts as half. Um, would you guys just give it up for our pastors here and their wives? Isn't it? Yeah. We are so blessed to have these pastors and their wives and their kids and everything leading us here at Flag. Um, it's just, it just is really awesome. We have a really great team, and I want to thank the spouses, Lori. Misty, duck, duck, goose, Lisa. Thank you for being an encouragement to your husband. Thank you for standing there with them, and thank you for listening when they <laughs> when they come home from either here or from talking with somebody. And just thank you for for being there for them. And we are blessed that you're here too. So, um, as Mike said in the video. Um, one of the ways you can show your appreciation is fill out one of the cards out there. And I know they'd love to get a card from you in appreciation of what, uh, recognizing what they're doing. And then also giving. We're obviously not going to pass baskets around. Otherwise, everybody would have to use hand sanitizer every single time. So we're not going to do that. Um, but we will, out here, we have a box on either side. And we have the envelopes that if you'll just put the, your offering into that and put on the outside, pastor appreciation, that'll allow us to know where it needs to go. So... Um, it's awesome. Thank you to each one of you. Thank you. Let's pray at this time. If you're here or at home, just extend your hands towards him. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for our pastors. We know that you've brought them here for this time and this place. And we know that it's a gift from you to have them, Father. We appreciate them so much. Father, first of all, we pray for their relationship with you, Lord. Just strengthen it, Father. Just show them more of you. Just give them your mercy and your grace and your love. And we thank you for that. Father, we pray for their marriages at this time. Just that you strengthen those. Make them just so healthy, Father. Bless their spouses. And bless our families, Father, Lord. Strengthen them. We pray your hedge of protection around and over them, that no weapon formed against them can prosper, Lord. Father, we ask you to just to bless our relationships with others. Lord, make them healthy. Make them strong, Father, and help them to pour out into them, Father, as you pour into them. Father, we just give you the praise and the glory again for the pastors, their wives, their families, Father, and tell you how much we appreciate them, Father. Fill them anew with your manna, Father, Lord, that they can just feed us and just touch others in Pittsburgh, Crawford County, and the surrounding areas. Lord, we give you all the praise and the glory, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. Uh, we, we appreciate we appreciate you appreciating us. Um, uh, love this team. Um, Pastor Anthony, Pastor Eli, 
and their spouses are dear, dear friends of ours now. We've been here for a year. It doesn't seem like it's been a year. Uh, it seems like that time has really passed. Of course, we had COVID right in the middle of that, but um, uh, it has been an absolute joy, and we love Flag Church. We love Pittsburgh. We're so grateful that God has placed us here, and we recognize it as a gift from his hand. I do want to say thank you to the board, uh, Todd and uh, Mike here, uh, 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 Mickey Painter, uh, Paul Christman, and uh, Dale Thompson also are on the board. We appreciate them so much, appreciate their support and their wisdom and, and their prayer support and, and uh uh, it, it really has just been a wonderful experience. I don't want to disrespect any staff teams that I've worked with in the past because we've been so blessed to be on the teams that we have. I will say, however, that I don't know of another staff that works as hard or as diligently as Pastor Anthony and Pastor Eli. And I just want to express my personal appreciation to them. I hope Anthony's not here. I hope it wasn't the rapture because we're all in trouble. Um, <laughs> But uh, I think he's in the lobby doing some more work. But yeah, just appreciate them so, so much. I don't know whether you ever watched uh, the series MASH, but Radar O'Reilly was the guy who took care of the actual MASH unit. Uh, he was the assistant to, uh, to the colonel and uh, uh, he would, the colonel would have things and he needed to do papers that he needed to sign and he would, as he was calling radar, radar would actually show up with the papers and he was always just a step ahead of the colonel. That is my experience here with Pastor Eli and Pastor Anthony. They're always just a step ahead of me and I appreciate them so much. Well, hey, let's get into the word this morning. Uh, we'll be coming to the scripture in just a moment, but let me ask the question as we head that direction. Have you ever seen somebody change? I mean, really change, like the kind of change that's from the inside out for the better, the kind of change where people see them show up where they've been previously and they say, whoa, something happened. You're different. Have you ever seen somebody change like that? My contention is, and I know I'm biased, but my contention is that most of the time when we see somebody change like that, that radically, that dramatically, it's because of a spiritual encounter. Somewhere they've connected with God and somehow that has changed them. But I think there's another facet of that kind of change that I'm, I'm, I, I tried this week to think of a time when, when this wasn't true and I can't think of a time. But now, I'm sure there are some times where this isn't true, but I think in the vast majority of times, it's not only an encounter with God, but it's also someone close to that individual recognizing and calling out that change. Somebody who sees that, that potential for change, somebody who sees the, the seed of change in that person, and they speak into that, and, and that's kind of the catalyst that that causes the change to actually take place. And as I look at our culture in these days, I think our culture is demonstrating the exact opposite in many cases of that process. All of us have heard that negative political campaigns are most effective. Have, have, have you heard that? Uh, uh, and it, that may be true to get somebody elected, but I'm concerned that that negativity, that process uh, is really damaging us as a culture and as a nation. Um, I, I think it's added to some of the angst and the negativity that we're experiencing as a nation and as a culture. It's, it's causing people not to work together. It's causing, it's bringing tremendous harm to the culture. In a time when we're facing challenges that we really need to come together, the nation seems to be divided. And, and I'm concerned, it doesn't seem to be divided, the nation is divided. I'm, I'm concerned that that kind of a mentality, that kind of a perspective is slipping into the church. That kind of negativity. Doug Clay is the general superintendent of the Assemblies of God, and we're part of that tribe. And uh, Doug said recently, 
It's disappointing when the nation is divided, but it's devastating when the church is divided. And we cannot allow that kind of division to take place in the church. And, and I was thinking this week, as, as I looked at the text that, that we're gonna look at, I, I, I was thinking, man, how do, we, how do we remain unified? How do we avoid that spirit of, of angst and division in the church? And as I look at this story that we're gonna read in just a moment, I, I see that Jesus demonstrated the exact opposite perspective especially in the text we're gonna look at where Jesus is speaking to, to Simon Peter. And he speaks into Simon Peter's life in a very specific way. But I, I just kind of backing up from that, can you imagine if Jesus had been campaigning against Simon Peter, some of the things he would have said about him? Just to kind of accentuate this, this kind of an atmosphere or, or attitude, uh, Certainly, Jesus would have pointed out Peter's lack of leadership experience. He would have, he would have nailed him on that. Can you imagine the, the commercials that would be seen on TV? Peter would be in black and white. His hair would be messy. It would be the worst picture of him possible. And Jesus would come on the screen and say, Peter, a man of no experience. He'd talk about how Peter had this impetuous personality and, and he'd talk about his instability. He might even suggest that, that Peter was mentally imbalanced. <laughs> Jesus could have gone negative on Peter, but, but he didn't. Instead, Jesus, Jesus saw the potential in Simon Peter. I love this story. In fact, in the story we're gonna read, Jesus actually renames Simon and gives him the new name Peter, everybody knew him as Simon. And the, the word Simon, the name Simon means hearing, but the name Peter means a rock. And it, it's fascinating because the disciples knew Peter not as a rock. They knew him as, as Simon, unstable, impetuous. Uh, we'll talk about that more in just a moment. Let's pick up the story. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, so he's gathered the 12 around him, and he asks his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. Then Jesus asked them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, you're the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, you're blessed, Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. And now I say to you that you are Peter. So he says, congratulations, God has spoken to you. And now I say to you, uh, you were Simon. I say to you, you are Peter. He, he changes Peter's name in this moment. You're, you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I'll build my church and the powers of hell will not conquer it. So as we look at this text and we, we look at it in hindsight, it's a little less than spectacular. But if we, if we step back and think about it for just a moment, about the setting and, and what the disciples were thinking at this moment in time. The disciples knew Simon as, um, I'm gonna be kind here, as a little edgy, <laughs> uh, uh, unpredictable at, at best. The kind of friend that you, 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 you want to keep your eye on. You know, you have those people in your life that you like, but you don't necessarily trust them. You may not want to send your kids on a vacation with them. Uh, you, you just don't know what they might say or do. They're constantly getting in trouble. You remember the night that Jesus was betrayed? The soldiers came and, and uh, they were ready to take Jesus and, and to arrest him. And who responded immediately? Peter. And he cut off this gentleman named Malchus's ear, one of the, one of the Roman guard. He, cut off his ear. Somebody said he wasn't aiming for his ear. He was aiming for his neck. And, and fortunately, Malchus dodged and Jesus had to work a, what would be a minor miracle, I guess, for him in that he only had to reattach his ear and not his head. That's Peter. <laughs> a little volatile, I would say. The kind of guy that you may not depend on in every situation. So with that in mind, Jesus is having this conversation with his disciples about Jesus' identity. It's a really interesting, interesting conversation because Jesus starts out relatively safe 
And he says, who do people say that I am? So he's kind of allowing the disciples to kind of give him a report. He's kind of saying, you know, you've got your ear to the ground. Who are people, what are people saying about me? What are, who, who do people think that I am? And the disciples just kind of report back what they've heard. And certainly in this case, you know, they say some people think you're John the Baptist, some people think you're Elijah, some people think you're Jeremiah. Uh, Herod Antipas had publicly spoken and said that he thought that Jesus was John the Baptist uh, resurrected. John the Baptist had been killed and beheaded and now he thinks, he thought that John the Baptist had been resurrected. Other people believed that Jesus may have been the forerunner to the Messiah, and the Jewish people, many of them, believed that Elijah would be the forerunner to the Messiah, that, that Elijah himself would be resurrected, and, and he would be the forerunner, and certainly the prophets talked about that. They, they kind of identified John the Baptist, actually, as Elijah. John the Baptist was the forerunner to the Messiah, but they didn't believe at this point that Jesus was the Messiah. They were thinking, he's Elijah. He's the one that's going to tell us about the Messiah, because Jesus was teaching uh, differently than what they expected a Messiah to actually teach. They thought that Jesus was going to come in and just crush the Roman government, set up a new government, and everybody would be happy because the Jewish people would be in charge. They thought that he was Elijah. Other people thought that Jesus was Jeremiah, again, resurrected, and there was a, a belief that Jeremiah would be raised at some point in Israel's uh, uh, future. And, and when Jesus came and he took such a strong stand on so many issues, and he talked about the, the, the condition of people's heart, hearts, people looked back to Jeremiah, who was also known as the weeping prophet. Jeremiah preached for 50 years, never had a single convert. That's why they called him the weeping prophet. He, he, he cried out. He, his heart was broken for Israel, and yet nobody responded to his message. And many people were saying, oh, Jesus is Jeremiah resurrected. He's got that same strong message. His heart is breaking, but his message is strong. And some people thought he was Jeremiah. And, and then the, so the conversation's pretty safe, it's pretty predictable, and then all of a sudden Jesus changes the entire game and he asks them, who do you say that I am? And I can just imagine that the disciples start looking at each other like, who's going to step into this? I don't, I don't know what the answer is. And suddenly Peter just kind of in accordance with his character, blurts something out. And Peter goes where nobody else, the disciples or anybody else, has gone before. The disciples probably, possibly, have been wondering if Jesus could possibly be the Messiah, but Simon puts it out there. Jesus say, well, who, says, who do you say that I am? And Simon responds and says, you're the Messiah, you're the son of the living God. And Jesus responds. You, you, you see, the disciples were expecting Jesus' response to be completely different. Here's Peter again, putting his foot in his mouth, saying something he shouldn't say. This is the kind of talk that will get us all killed. They're expecting Jesus to say, hold on, cowboy, back up. You stepped over a line here. Nobody's God here. But that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said something here. And again, in retrospect, we look at it and think, well, of course, that's what Jesus said. But in the moment, this is, this is an incredible, incredible thing that's happening because Jesus looks back at Simon Peter and he essentially says, you have heard from God. God is speaking to you. And then Jesus changes Peter's name. And he says, you were Simon. But I'm going to call you the rock. <laughs> and I'm sure the rest of the disciples were, were looking at this and just absolutely bewildered. Uh, first, you know, Simon Peter says, you're the Messiah. That's shocking enough. And then Jesus responds and says, yeah, God told you that. That's shocking again. And then the third thing that happens is this guy who has been putting his foot in his mouth, getting him in trouble over and over and over again. And Jesus says, you're the man. <laughs> 
Proverbs, uh, Jesus did what, what the writer of Proverbs talked about in Proverbs chapter 20 and verse five when he said, the purposes of a person's heart are deep waters, but one who has insight draws them out. Jesus had the insight to see Peter's heart. He had the insight to, to draw it out. He saw the person that nobody else saw in Simon Peter and he called it out of him. And I would submit to you this morning that God wants to do the same thing for you and for me. He sees the treasure that's in your heart. Maybe nobody else sees it yet, but he does. And he wants to call it out today. I think one of the ways that we hear God speak to us that way is that we, we spend time to, to hear him actually change our name. Proverbs again says uh, in Proverbs 20 and verse five, your purposes are deep waters. And I would, I would suggest that, that it takes time for the deep waters to be revealed. It takes time with God. It's required to, to hear him change, change our name. Because sometimes I think we have the wrong idea about who we are. And a person this morning, whether you're here, whether you're watching on your device online, a person might think, oh, my name is cynical. <laughs> but God calls you charitable. Maybe others think you're undisciplined, but God calls you disciplined. Maybe others think you're a loser, but God calls you loved. You may think, you know, I'm depressed, but God says that you're his delight. You're his delight. You may think your name is sinner, but God calls you the righteousness of Jesus Christ. If we spend time in his presence, he begins to speak with us. I, I love what Jeff Dio said last week, his suggestion, uh, what they're doing with their family. Maybe you remember it, but he said, we're doing our time with God and we kind of break it into three sections and we call it 10, 10, 10, 10 minutes in prayer, 10 minutes in the word and 10 minutes in musical worship. And he said, that's how we fill up our half hour. And so many people have expressed appreciation for that because many times we think, oh, I'm going to be in God's presence. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to talk to him for about 30 seconds. And then I don't know what I'm going to do for the other 29 minutes and 30 seconds. But I thought that was a great idea. And somebody said, well, where do I start? Well, start whatever, with whatever you love the most. If you love to read the word and that's the most meaningful thing, start there. If you love musical worship, start with musical worship. If you love just to be in God's presence and, and pray and, and talk to him and hear back from him, do that first. Whatever you like the most, do that first. Somebody says, well, shouldn't I wait and do what I like the most at the end? No, do what you like the most first so that you get started. And my experience is that when I start with where, what I'd like to do, God just fills in the other, uh, the other pieces so, so well. But we need to spend time. And I just want to encourage you. Maybe you're a person who has struggled with this, uh, spending time with God. Spend time with God. However, if, if, you, if you say, I can't start with 10, 10, 10, start with 3, 3, 3 and do nine minutes. But spend time in God's presence. And as you're in God's presence, Allow him to speak to you and reshape, reshape your self-perspective, your understanding of who you are. Allow God to speak into that. Somebody says, well, once, once I've heard from God, what do, I, what do I do then? Well, after we've heard from the Lord and we've discovered who we are, then we become change agents for other people. It's what God's put us on the earth to do. Uh, if, if we didn't have that purpose, then it would be good for us just to hear from God who he says we are and then take us home. <laughs> but God's got another purpose for us. He, he wants us not just to have our lives changed, but he wants us to become change agents. Well, how do we do that? Well, we begin to, we begin to act like Jesus. We begin to do what he does. We, we begin to recognize the incredible value of every person that we see every individual that you'll see today or any day for the rest of your life, any individual that you bump into is going to have one thing in common. And that one thing is this, that Jesus died for them so that they could know a heavenly father. Every person that we see, God wants a relationship with, with each one of them. 
So how do we become change agents for other people? We begin to see people as creations of God. And, and listen, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'm going to get ahead of myself. So how do we do that? Well, we begin to look for the gifts. Now, the person that you bump into may have different gifts than what your gifts are. In fact, they probably will. So you and I need to learn how to celebrate gifts that aren't necessarily appealing to us. Why? Because there's beauty in the diversity. Aren't you glad that God didn't make everybody like you? Well, let me just tell you, I'm glad that he didn't make, I'm, I'm kidding. Um, God made us all individually, and he has a purpose in that. There's beauty in diversity. And so we need to begin to look for the gifts that other people have, and their gifts will be different than ours. So how do we do that? Well, we begin by looking for the gifts in the other person. We recognize them as a creation of God. We begin to look for their gifts. And the third thing that we do is we withhold judgment. You see, because if we're judging first, it's difficult to see gifts. If we're judging first, it's difficult to see gifts. And your gifts your desires, your interests are going to differ from other people's. But you see, the wise person, Proverbs says, sees those purposes as deep waters, and the wise person calls them out, reveals those deep waters, reveals those gifts. So you might be an outdoors person. God wants you to see the gift that an interior decorator likes or has. You may be an interior decorator. God wants you to see the gifts that the outdoors, you, you may say, I don't, I don't, I'd never want to shoot a deer. Yeah, well, just embrace that they want to. <laughs> See the gifts that somebody else has. You may be an artist and you don't care for football or you may love football and, and don't really, can't, haven't figured art out yet. But it's okay to appreciate. Listen, it's a good thing to appreciate gifts that aren't yours. It's a good thing, and we need to practice that. And one of the best ways to do that, I didn't talk about this in the early service, but one of the best ways to do that is to develop a holy curiosity, to be a person who really is curious about the other person, that, that we ask questions and we, we try to discover what their gifts are and, and develop that appreciation because as we do that, it blesses them and it'll come back to bless us. You see, we don't judge first. We look for the gifts first. In fact, in John, you know, you know the verse, John chapter 3, verse 16, right? Do you know that verse? I, I threw off our, our, um, our, our video. People are really on it. Uh, I didn't throw them off. John chapter 3, verse 16. 16, you know that verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, we know it in King James, so that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. It's one of the most famous verses in all the scripture. I love the verse that follows it because the verse that follows it, John 3, 17, talks about, it kind of extends the purpose, it, it, it amplifies Jesus' purpose. God didn't send us, here's what it says, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. In other words, God didn't send, you see, people were expecting the Messiah to come and to crush those that were against God. And God says, no, 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 that's not it at all. I didn't send my son into the world to exclude people. I sent my son into the world to include people. I didn't send my son into the world to condemn the world. I sent my son into the world to invite the world into a relationship with God. So the people of God are the people who love first. The people of God are the people who embrace first. Not, not during COVID, but normally we embrace first. The people of God are the ones who encourage first. Lori and I have a friend, Jody Dietrich, who wrote a book. Lori's done some Bible studies with women with this, uh, with this book. It's The Jesus-Hearted Woman. And in that book, she devotes an entire chapter to being uh, what she calls first clappers. You know, uh, in, in every meeting, there's a first clapper. Uh, Todd was in the, as he was up here, was in the first service, and whoever clapped first for the pastors, Todd leaned down and said, it's the first clapper. The first clapper is the person who claps first, 
and starts, it's in the one in the Walt Disney movie who gets converted at the end of the movie and does the slow clap. That's the first clapper. It, and there's tremendous power there. The first, first clapper, we've joked about it as the staff will be in a meeting and, and uh, uh, we were at, I'm back. We were at a, a network meeting, a bunch of pastors, a bunch of churches, and we, were, we had talked about this idea of being a first clapper. So we're in this group with hundreds and hundreds of people, and we had this competition. We'd anticipate when we were supposed to clap, and we'd be the first clappers and kind of encourage each other. But anyway, that's, God wants the people of God to be the first clappers, the ones who embrace first, the ones who love first, the ones who encourage first. That's what God has called us to do. And that's exactly what Jesus did when he came into the world. Now, there's a diversity of gifts, as we mentioned, and Paul recognized that, our tendency to, to, to like some gifts and disparage other gifts. And he talked about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, in verse 18. He said, but now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. God has placed you and placed me exactly as he desired. If they were all one member, he says, where would the body be? But now there are many members, but one body. And the eye can't say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, it's much truer that the members of the body, which seem to be weaker, are necessary. The gifts we least appreciate sometimes are the most necessary gifts. And those members of the body, which we deem less honorable, on these we bestow more, abun we bestow more abundant honor. And our less presentable members become much more presentable, whereas our more presentable members have no need of it. Here it is. But God has so composed the body, giving more abundant honor to the member which lacked, so that there may be no division in the body. Remember we talked about we don't want that divisiveness in the body of Christ so that there would be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. God calls us to be like Christ, not, not judging first, but loving first. So how do we do that? Well, I, I wanna talk about really quickly some really practical ways. Maybe if there's a parent in the room as a parent, I, I want to encourage you to look for ways to encourage your kids. And I, I know that in the throes of parenting, we're empty nesters now, and now we're kind of focused on our grandkids and, and uh, seeing their little lives shaped and formed. But as parents, I know that it can get really, really grueling. But as we encourage our children, there's, there's unique and tremendous power when parents encourage their kids. I think there's something spiritual in that. It's similar to when parents pray for their kids. I think there's a unique power when parents pray for their kids, when grandparents pray for their kids and their grandkids. I think there's a unique and, and, and uh, a special thing that happens there, a special anointing from God. Uh, years ago, Lori, when our kids were still at home, Lori shared an illustration with me um, that talks about mirrors. And when you wake up in the morning, you know, you, you look in the mirror and you kind of make sure all the matter's out of your eyes and you wash your face and, and you look at it before you, before you head out the door, you, you look in the mirror to make sure that everything's together. And somebody said that women, when they typically look in the mirror to make sure everything's together, they're still fixing things. And when guys walk past the mirror, we just kind of stop and go, awesome and go on. Uh, I don't know that that's really true or not, but, but uh, we look in the mirror to kind of check ourselves and make sure that we're presentable and we kind of gauge ourselves with that process of looking in the mirror. The author that Lori was reading said that when our kids, when we leave the house, we look in the mirror. When our kids leave the house, they look at our faces. And that smile that you share with your child as they, as they leave the house. Sometimes we have to smile by faith, right? But that smile that we share with our children helps them to identify themselves and see themselves in that moment. Parents, you, you can't tell your kids that you love them too often. I know that they'll get to a place maybe in middle school or whatever when that becomes extremely embarrassing. Keep on doing it. 
And one of the reasons that God has made you a parent is to embarrass your kids with how much you love them. Keep explaining to them how much you love them. Parents have a, a unique purpose in calling out the gifts of, of their kids. Spouses have, have a unique position to, to call out the gifts in, in our husbands or wives. Couples, I want to encourage you, if you're married today, you're looking to get married, I want to encourage you to, to encourage your spouse. More compliments, not fewer. You know, in all the years that we've been in ministry, I've never, ever had a spouse, a husband come and say to me, you know, she just compliments me way too much. I've never had a wife say, he is so nice, it makes me crazy sometimes. Never had a spouse say, if they say thank you one more time after dinner, I'm going to slug them. Why? Because we can't get enough. Somebody might say, you know, I'm just not verbal or I'm just not feeling it. That's okay, since your wedding vows were, I take you to be my spouse and to love and to cherish as long as I feel like it. it it's okay. It's, no, that's not what we promised, is it? We said, till death do we part. And you know, I think sometimes marriage challenges, sometimes, not always, sometimes are more simple than we make them. I think we begin to get off course when we begin to take each other for granted rather than call out the gifts that we see in each other and express appreciation for those gifts. I heard a pastor being interviewed just this last week, 80 years old, and he's looking back at his life of ministry and he's being interviewed by a, a younger guy, a guy who's 50. And they began to talk about where he's at in this season of his life. And he said, you know, it, it's challenging being 80. It's not for, not for weaklings. He said, most of my friends are dead. He said, my wife and I have talked about this. He said, I look forward to heaven but both of us have said that our great concern is that unless we go together, that we're going to have to leave the other one here. And we're concerned about how the other will make it. As I heard him share that, I thought, yeah, that's, that's where I want to be when I'm 80. That's what I want my relationship with Lori to be like. Spouses, we can call out the gifts in each other. Maybe you're a business leader here today. We can make sure that we're searching out the deep purposes of our employees. Every one of your employees has a, a deep purpose, and we can have an impact on their lives. Maybe it's uh, working with coworkers, and every one of your coworkers has a deep purpose, and we can begin to call out those gifts. Listen, God has placed them. It, it's not an accident that you're working next to the people that you're working with. It's not an accident that you have the employees that you have. It's not an accident, stay with me, that you have the the employer that you have. God's orchestrating all of those things and he set you there for this time in this place with a purpose. As believers with, with fellow Christians, we can call out the purposes of God in each other's lives. We can look for opportunities to affirm one another's gifts. As, as believers, we can do that with people who are far from God, our friends who may not have a relationship with God yet. One of the most effective ways to influence someone who may not have a relationship with God is to call out their gifts and where they're at right now, to, to be that winsome person that they may need in their lives that values them and, and sees their value and, and holds them with the same esteem that God holds them, that he loves them and he sent his son to die in their place. Calling out those gifts that, those purposes that are deep waters, but that God gives us the ability to see. So maybe this morning you need to have the same experience that Simon Peter had. You need 
to hear Jesus give you a new name, to change the way that you view yourself. Or maybe God is speaking to you about a Simon Peter in your life, someone who needs to be told that they're valuable. Maybe a child or a spouse or a coworker or a friend, whatever it might be. But God has set you in this place for such a time as this. I don't know what your situation is, but I believe that God wants to meet us wherever we are in that process. So I'm gonna ask you to stand with me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for each person in this room. And Lord, as we've had opportunity to look around and earlier to give air high fives or a wave across the room, we're just reminded this morning, Lord, of the incredible value of each person in this room. God, I pray for those who may need to really and truly hear the voice of the Spirit today. Begin to call out their purpose to change their name. Lord, help us to hear your voice, whether it's in this moment of time or or at a time when we go back home, maybe tomorrow morning, and we, we sit down to have 10, 10, 10, or 3, 3, 3, or whatever the amount of time is. We sit in your presence for just a few moments. Help us, help each individual, God, to hear your voice, to speak to us about your purpose that you have for us. Lord, I pray that you really would make us your ambassadors as parents, as spouses, as friends, as workers, employees, employers, whatever our role might be, God, that you would, you would use us this week to plumb those deep waters in the lives of those around us and to call out those purposes and those gifts. And with heads bowed and eyes closed, I want to extend an offer. Maybe today you're saying, you know, I'm not sure that I've ever really come into that personal relationship with God that's been talked about this morning. You're not sure if, if, if something were ha to happen to you today. You're not sure what your eternal destiny would be, but you'd like to be certain about that. If, if that's your situation, I want to pray for you. If that's your need today, I'm going to ask you simply to slip your hand up. If you're there at home, just place your hand on your heart. By raising a hand or by placing a hand on your heart, you're just saying, yeah, that's, that's me. I need to know that I have a relationship with God through Christ. That's my situation. There are several people who have placed their hands on their hearts. As we're bowed in prayer, I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer after me. I'm going to ask everybody to pray it in support of those that may be praying it for the first time. But would you repeat this prayer with me? Those of you who are watching online, would you repeat it with me? Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. I turn away from my sin. And I turn toward you. I give you all of my life. All that I am. All that I have. All that I hope to be. I'm yours. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for changing me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. If you prayed that prayer, especially if you prayed it for the first time, I'm gonna ask you simply to text us at 620-254-0303 with the word believe. We'd love to follow up with you. <coughs> Let's continue to worship the Lord this morning.
go from this place and go be Jesus. Go be Jesus to people and allow Jesus to continue to show you who he says that you are and what he wants to do through you and in you. And man, I just pray that this week will be an amazing week of seeing God's trans transformative love in your life, in your relationships, in the people around you, that they would just see something different in you as you allow Jesus to transform who you are and the way that you think and the way that you love and just the way that you show who he is to other people. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you so much for every single person that is here. I thank you for every person that is watching online. I thank you for every person that will watch this throughout the week, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that we would be aware of who you are, of who you are call us to be Jesus, of who you say that we are. Father, I pray that we would be aware of how much you believe in us, how much you see in us, God. Uh, Lord, the, the plans that you have for us, the God, that you created us in your image, and because you created us in your image, Lord, you have so much in store for us, Lord. You see so much more 
in us. And I pray that this week we would be on the look for that, that we would be thinking of ourselves in the way that you think of us, Lord, that we would look at other people and we would see them in the creation of your eyes, Father, that we would look at them as being people, Father, that were created by you, that are deserving of your love, Father, and that we would be the people that would show that love to them, that we would be Jesus to them, God, that they would see you through us, Lord, and that they would want you because of just the love that they see through us, the, the, the love that they see, um, God, that they would just see you in us. Lord, I just pray that that would be what people would see in us this week, that they wouldn't see our, our, uh, our just our beliefs, that we wouldn't see our opinions, Lord, but that they would see you in us, God, that that would be the thing that sticks out. Not who we are, but, Father, that you would stick out in the way that we live our lives. So, Lord, I pray that you would bless every single person in this place. God, I pray that you would give them courage and humility. I pray that you would give them boldness and an ability, Father, to go out and to be you to this dark world, Jesus. To show your light, to show your love to every single person that they come in contact with. Lord, that they would be blessed this week. That they would bless other people this week, God. Through the love that you've put with them, with through in them, God, that they would just experience that love, but then that they would shower that love to the people that are around them, Lord. So we bless you, God. I thank you, Father, that you don't leave us where we are, but that you call us uh, outward, that you call us to a better place, that you call us to be like you, Lord, that you don't leave us where we are, Father, but that you are a God of grace, but God, that you are a God that pushes us and pulls us and challenges us to be better, to be like you, Lord. We want to be like you. We want people to see you in us. So we bless you, Father. We love you. And uh, we ask this in your mighty and precious name. Amen. Well, we love you guys so much. Thank you um, so much for being here. We're praying that you have a wonderful rest of your day. And we look forward to seeing you either on Wednesday night or Sunday morning. Have a great rest of your Sunday. We're so excited that you guys decided to join us today, praying that Jesus has done amazing things in your life. Hey, we would love to have you in person next week if it works out. If not, we have loved having you a part of our online church as you are an extension of Flag Church here in our community. We love you guys so much. We're praying for you, um, praying that this will be a wonderful week. And uh, we cannot wait to be with you guys again next week and, and continue to stay tuned in with us online through social media. And uh, we're excited for the future that God has for Flag Church and for you.